On today's show, we're looking at the Osbot Tail Air PTZ camera in the studio environment. There's plenty of other YouTube videos out there that go into the AI tracking and the gestures and the smartphone integration. But for me today, I wanted to take a look at how to use this camera in a multicam studio. First of all, a disclaimer that um, Obvot has sent these cameras. They don't have editorial input. These are my own opinions and things that I've discovered or um, have wanted changed over the time that I've had them. This is the camera that we're looking at, which is a small PTZ camera. It does have auto tracking in it. It can go up to 4K. One of the things that is really impressive about these cameras is just the connections that they have available. So from this these cameras can output video over uh, micro HDMI, USB-C, like a webcam, over Ethernet with um, NDI or RTMP. You can stream directly from it. You can control it via the remote control or Visca or OSC or the web app, um, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, recording on board. Like there's, there's just so much going on in this camera. There's, it's really impressive what they've been able to squeeze into a tiny little camera. I think also what's really neat for this sort of size camera is that it has these sort of controls for um, NDI, OSC, and Visca. Let's take a look at the um, in and outs of it. So this is kind of the size of what it looks like in my hand. You'll see it's got a, a gimbal on the top, so that's uh, pan and tilt, and then the zoom is digital. And the around the back here, so this is the front, which has a battery indicator. Uh, around the back is the power button, USB-C, which can also be an ethernet. On one side is the SD card and the HDMI port. And on the other side is the um, 3.5 millimeter for uh, like a microphone in, if you wanted to do that. And then on the underside, there's a nice little bit of rubber. So that actually um, sits well, doesn't slide across the desk. It's really solid. And the weight of the battery also gives it a bit of um, stability as well. So that's been neat. And I've been able to use this without needing to actually put it on a tripod. You kind of find a surface somewhere and elevate it and get the right shot. It means less gear to travel with. And it's got a quarter 20 thread here, which means that you can do things like, let me go up here. I've got one here mounted at the back. So you can actually like mount it upside down. And because it's so lightweight, you can use a pretty sort of lightweight grip to do that. Let's take a look at the quality comparison. So I have um, set up my uh, a cameras side by side here. So as close as I could get it, it's not a perfect match, uh, but you've got a, a Canon N300 and then one of the Osbot um, tail airs here. And so you can, and they're both sort of set to manual. It should be the same color temperature and just trying to get the images as, as even as possible so you can sort of compare how they look. This is on the full wide, so you are getting the 4K resolution of the tail air when you're on the wide angle, but just think about the that width is, is fixed. So if you want that sort of full resolution, um, you're going to need to place that camera in the right shot size for what you're looking for. I'm, if I reach out here, I'm probably about an arm's length. If I really stretched, I could probably reach that camera. So it's it's fairly close. So just think about that when you're placing your cameras around a scene. If we zoom into a mid shot here, we uh, it's still looking pretty good. So it gives you a little bit of room to sort of frame up and still got resolution that is good to work with. And then if we go into a close up, um, this is what we're looking at in terms of the image comparison. So the, the C300, is obviously because it's optical zoom, it's going to have more of a bokeh sort of background out of focus, whereas the digital zoom has a, um, and a, a sort of smaller pixel size means that we're going to get a little more sharpness on the background. You can see here, and also my sort of face and hair is is a little has a little more sharpness. But I would say in a pinch, um, the images are pretty good. You know, there's a bit of a difference in skin tones. Um, I've also noticed some of the skin tones can differ between using setting the color temperature via the app versus sending a visca command like 5600 is not always the same i don't know why um but i, I would say it's sort of acceptable quality to integrate into a studio and get other um, cameras into that let's take a look at some of the applications that you can use the fastest way you'll get going is the uh, osbot start app you can rescan for cameras this was pretty easy for it to come up. 
and I've got two connected here. And so if I go tap onto there, I'm on the same. So my phone is on the same Wi-Fi network as the cameras. The top button's home to get out of it. And then we've got sort of a director layout where you can jump around and choose different shots. And um, you can adjust settings here. We've got a sort of playback for media that's on there. And then if you go all the way down to about device, and down to here, this is where you can set your um, network information here if you need to do that. The other app that we have is the computer app, and there's one called um, Obspot Center. This is my preferred way of using the app because I just I find things are easier on a computer. It's just like easier input, better integration. Phones are they have their place, but um, computers are the way to go. So. This control panel here basically has sort of your console, your image control, and then more sections here, which we can come back to in a sec. And then you can control your camera um, through one of four slots. And under the settings button up here, that's where you can actually come in and assign these. So if you were to drag them around, then you'd be moving which one of those slots, one, two, three, four, is addressing the different camera. Um, and you can see your addresses here for Wi-Fi and for Ethernet. So it's a really nice way of um, using that. The other neat thing in here is you can turn on a virtual camera. That is basically similar to plugging in a webcam. If you open up Zoom or FaceTime or any of those apps that use webcams, it'll be one of the cameras that appears in the app there. And then over here, we've got, um, we can monitor it. Again, like I was saying, if we check different cameras, it'll select the different camera, uh, depending on which one we have selected there. Pros and cons. Um, so I'll start with my my observations, and we'll start with the bad, moving on to the good, and then the things that I would love to see. Some of the things about like a small camera is things like micro SD card and micro HDMI, and I, I know it has to be smaller, but there are problems with that. The, the micro SD card slot is super tight. You need to get your nail in there and pull that out. And it's, it's just very easy to like put it in and miss the, the slot on the inside. I know, you know, drones can be a bit like this. It's probably part of the course with these size cards. Trying to insert it, you need long nails. Ugh. I thought I'd be better at it than that. Um, okay, there we go, I got it. <laughs> so I just, I wish that was a little bit um, easier to insert a card. The other thing you do need to be careful with is the HDMI port. And um, this probably goes for many other cameras, but I do feel like this is very fragile and you need to be very careful of the, the angle at which you insert this. So, you know, if you are not inserting it directly, like if you're just kind of pushing it in and going like that, similar to the SD card, um, you might find that you damage the pins. Be wary of that. The Obsot Center app, I love the functionality in it, but I have found that it crashes a fair bit. So I feel like that needs a bit of like firmware update stabilization. I've taken some crash logs. I don't know that I would trust it with a client shoot yet. We can't set the drive speed or the drive time for a smooth on-air maneuver between presets. So what I mean here is um, I imagine this could be updated in the firmware, but you get this kind of like it's an off-air kind of repositioning rather than something that could sort of smoothly go in and be an on-air maneuver. Let's get on to the good because there is plenty of good things here. And um, I'm happy to say, I feel like the image quality for the price point and the size of the camera, it's different and it's, you know, a little bit sharper and some of the skin tones aren't quite as nice, but like it's, it's a really solid image compared to a sort of larger camera with optical Zoom. The remote was really easy to pair, super straightforward. Everything works well. It's, it's got some pretty cool features. The only weird thing is like, this looks like it's unfinished, like it needs to be clipped onto something. The firmware was really easy to update and the latency is really low. So I was very impressed with that because if you've ever tried to use like a Canon mirrorless camera and use the Wi-Fi on it, it's just a terrible experience. You're, you spend all this time trying to connect and then it drops out and you're trying to connect again. So I just, I do not use it ever on set. Whereas these tiny little apps 
are actually like the the latency is good on it and it's not dropping out and it's just it just works. So I think that's that's a really big win for the little guy. The protective carry case is great, which is just really neat to travel with. I, I traveled to Portugal recently, pops in there, fits it well. You can get a little bit of space for a cable and a charger so you can get everything you need in um, the one case. The PoE cable is fantastic. This is probably one of my favorite things. I know this is really weird to say, but this PoE cable is a really interesting device when you think about where this camera sits in the the market. It's kind of it's still consumer, but it's like it's it's verging on to prosumer. USB-C into the back of the camera, and then on the other end of that is this PoE port. Or if you don't have PoE, you can just attach a network Ethernet cable and then use this US USB-C here with a regular you know charger type thing um, to you know plug a, a USB-C cable into it. I was very impressed with that, and because it just in a studio environment, and part of what I'm talking about here today is like it makes it very reliable to have everything on a network. Um, it's not going to reassign Wi-Fi addresses. You can have a network address, it's going to stay there, and then you can power the studio on and off with the switch. Which kind of brings me to my next point, and this was something where I'd actually given feedback to the developers and they were really good at listening. Like, sure, we can build that in, which is that I have a studio environment here, right, where at the end of the day, I want to power everything down by turning off a main switch. So now what happens is if you come into Obspot Center in the more section here, plug, unplug to power on and off. If you turn that on, what that means is when you either disconnect the USB-C cable or leave it connected but turn the power off that is um, inputting into it, then this camera will actually shut itself down. Where that's handy is all the cameras plugged into a network switch that at the end of the day I can power that down and all the cameras will turn off. And then when I come back into the studio, I turn on that PoE switch and all the cameras will boot up. Um, otherwise, this battery in here will lose the power, but it would be continuing to run and then it would die. And then when you come into the studio and you power it on, it would be charging the battery but not automatically turn on. Anytime I bring equipment into this studio, I want it to be something that I can set up and then it will just work time and again. And these are doing that, which has been great. What would I like to see in the next version of this? I know this has just come out, but if I if I look ahead, the main thing I think is just some form of optical zoom for podcasts, interviews, events, to get close up like a kitchen. It's stationary, right? Like you're not, it's not a camera operator who's running around with it. The whole point of a PTZ is that you can set it up and then it will do the work for you. So having some more optical zoom, it's probably the main thing is just like getting optical zoom in this and then I'd, I'd be like, oh my God, this is, this is amazing. All right, pushing along. Join me next week and we're gonna go into using the Elbspot in a more minimalist approach with just the USB-C to USB-C cable and keep things minimalist, but also sort of comprehensive to do a bigger show with elements like this. And then there's also a profile that you can get that will be able to control this camera from Companion so that you can integrate that with um, your run of show and do all the sort of automated moves like we're, we're doing here. I'll see you then.